Hey, it's Mr. H, and in this video I'll be showing you how to do regressions in Desmos. We're going to look at a lot of different types of regressions, but before you begin, if you need a starter video, a tutorial on some basics of what you can do in Desmos, then click on the link up here in the corner to help you with that. Now first of all, before you do a regression, you're going to need a table of values. So you see here I have x1 and y1 in a table of values. You can get to that by clicking on table in that little addition menu. Now, once you have your table of values input, which you can either type in directly or you can copy and paste from a spreadsheet, you are probably going to want to find the line of best fit. So look down here where I have linear regression. In this folder, it's going to show you what you type in to do that line of best fit. So check this out. We have Y1 tilde, which is that kind of squiggly line, Y1 tilde M X1 plus K. To get those subscript ones to show up, you can just type Y and then a one directly after it, and Desmos automatically knows that you want to have that be a subscript. Y1 tilde M X1 plus K. Notice that that M value and K value are shown down below. It tells me what those parameters should be for this to be the line of best fit. Now, when I take out that one on the X, and this is a very common thing, it says subscripts are not allowed to be empty. Notice we're not doing a regression just between Y and X. We're using the values from the table up above. So we need to put in X1 and Y1 respectively. Notice the R value and the R squared value tell us how good of a fit this line is. And with an R squared of only 0.478, that is really not a good fit for our data. We can also look at the residual plot by clicking on plot next to this. The main thing about a residual plot shown here in purple dots is that if there's a pattern in your residual plot, then that means that was not a very good choice for the type of regression to use. You're going to want to use a different type of regression. So with that in mind, let's turn off this linear regression and we'll get rid of that residual plot that we had, and we'll go down and try a different type of regression. So next up is going to be a quadratic regression. Let's see what that's going to look like. When we turn this one on, we're going to see that we have y1 tilde a x1 squared plus b x1 plus c. Notice those subscript ones still have to be there because that's going to use the data from up above in our table with the x1 column and the y1 column. But this time we have it in a standard quadratic format to do this regression. So it will automatically find the quadratic curve of best fit and it tells us our r squared value is now 0 0.8202. That's a much better fit for our data, but still it's not that great. And when we do the residual plot, we see a pattern again, which means quadratic was not the right thing to really try here. And we'll want to turn that off and try yet again. So I'll delete those residuals and try cubic. Now a cubic fit is going to be even better. You'll notice my cubic having the subscript of one all the way through, and you'll notice that it's in a standard cubic form. Also, you can see that I did not use the letters A, B, C, and D again because those letters are already being used. I had to use new letters for these parameters. Also, you should not use the letter E, lowercase e, as a parameter because that is Euler's number or Euler's number, 2.718. So that would be a bad choice. It would automatically think you were trying to use that number if you use lowercase e. Notice our R squared value is now 0.9585. We're starting to get to a better fit, but still not perfect. And if we look at the residual plot for this graph, then we're going to see again that we have a pattern. So I'm actually going to just move on and go right to exponential. Because at this point, I think everyone's realizing this is really going to be fit well with an exponential type of a graph. So I type in an exponential format using y1 tilde m n to the x1 power. And I could have used any letters that I want there. I could have used a times b to the x1, but a and b were already used up as parameters earlier, so that's why I didn't use those. Now we have an r squared value of exactly 1, meaning we have a perfect fit 
to our data. And so if we look down here at the end value, it's 2.71828, which I mentioned is Euler's number E. If I do the residual plot, I see that it's zeros right across the board and right down that column of residuals, it's all zeros. And that means we really do have a perfect fit to this data. So we've found the equation of the data that we were using. Hopefully you see how when we do y1 versus x1 from our table, we can then translate that into what the equation we end up with at the end is. Now, I hope this helps, and if you need this file to help you understand better, you can check it down in the description. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to my videos to get more tutorials and other Desmos stuff like this.